würde ich sagen. Welcome back to Orion Talk Radio. You're listening to The Conscious Resistance. My name is Derek Bros. Thank you guys for tuning in. Today is January 27th. But I'm happy to bring to you guys some new friends of mine. I did a video about a month ago about the Keystone XL pipeline and talking about why I think this is an issue that people of all stripes should care about, not just those who are concerned with the the environment, but if you care about property rights, if you care about just globalization, all these different there's there's plenty of reasons to care about this pipeline. And some of the people who've been fighting it are the Tar Sands blockade. And who am I speaking with now? This is Luna, and this is Walker. Luna and Walker, awesome. Thank you guys for taking some time to talk to me. Thanks for having us. Yeah, for sure. Well, I was telling P Funk yesterday that, and like I was saying, I've been keeping up with the situation, and I try to talk about it as often as I can through uh, my outlets. But I wanted to give everybody an update about what's happening. But first of all, if you guys could. Just tell a little bit about how you guys got involved with the Tar Sands blockade and what exactly it is. Well, this is Luna. Uh, I helped start the Tar Sands blockade uh, about eight months ago when we did a tree sit up in Winsboro, Texas, um, protecting some land up there and just trying to stop the pipeline at large and draw attention to it by actually stopping the construction, and we got a lot of notice through that. All right, and so what, what's happened since then? I mean, I've, the movement has definitely grown a lot. You said you started it, and what's happened in those eight months? Um, well, there's certainly been a lot of other groups besides us, the Tar Sands Blockade, involved. Um, since then, we've been seeing a lot more attention drawn to the issue by a lot of different groups who are now starting to get active. Um, that's really encouraging. Um, so we've also started to see up in the north, I've been following it closely. I'm really interested Um and amazed and proud of um, the indigenous folks up there who are having their land, uh, their sovereignty threatened by this company, TransCanada, and by Tarzan's extraction. And so we're just we're starting to see a lot of growth. It's really exciting. Starting to see more and more people, um, you know, being concerned, looking forward, being concerned for the future of uh, their people and their planet. And so you've guys been, you guys have been able to really partner up with not only just the property, the the environmental crowd, but the property rights, the people who are concerned with that. And I think for me, this is why it's an important issue because there's so many different things going on in the world that divide people. And really, I think the tar sands, the pipeline is probably one of the most pressing issues, but it also is, it's in a way that we can try to reach across these boundaries and get people to come together. And that's, that's for me has been an amazing thing to see happen is just to see the property rights owners, the environmentalists and the anarchists come together. Um, tell us a little more about, about that, about the, uh, the coalition of people that have come together. Um, yeah, well, we've seen a coalition early on. We saw a lot of landowners who were upset uh, because they were having their property seized from them and expropriated from them. And so we, uh, there was a lot of attention on that end um, early on. Um, so we definitely, um, you know, been working with those folks as well as now we're, um, we're starting to pay more and more attention, um, to the ends of the pipeline, both the end of the extraction up in Alberta, Canada, um, where land is being seized, um, from sovereign indigenous, uh, groups. And now we're down here in Houston, um, at the other end of the pipeline where the refining is supposed to take place to ship the tar sand uh, out to the global markets. And we're really seeing here a lot of the effects um, that this refining has on the people who live in these communities. You know, this is down here on the Gulf, and it's just, um, it's a very dangerous project, and it's a very uh, corrosive and polluting project that we're seeing. And so now we're down here working um, with the people who are going to be most affected by the refining and shipment of tar sands. Awesome. Yeah, I've been noticing a bit more tar sands action happening in Houston, so that's good to hear. Because we wanna, we wanna give, we wanna give the movement as much of a voice as, as possible. So we'd love to work with you doing, you guys doing video promotion, anything we can to really get the word out. Because it is such a pressing, a pressing issue. What progress do you think has been made? Hi, Derek. This is Walker. Hey, how are you doing? Uh, so yeah, we watched for you. Hey, there have been a group of tar sands blockaders working in Houston for about three months now. Um, there was a lockdown action that happened in the neighborhood of Manchester on the east end of Houston, uh, where there is a massive Valero refinery that uh, surrounds the only park in the neighborhood. 
Uh, Valero is one of the top investors in the Keystone XL pipeline and, ironically enough, has been called the Keystone to the Keystone XL pipeline. Um, here in the community of Manchester, about uh, 98% Latino, and it's a pretty low-income neighborhood, and it's very uh, obvious that industry is exploiting uh, communities like Manchester. Uh, as I mentioned, there was a lockdown action in front of the refinery at the end of November where Bob Lindsay and Diane Wilson, who are activists from Sea Drift, Texas, um, they locked their necks to industrial trucks outside the Valero refinery uh, to uh, prohibit the refinery from functioning for that day. Uh, people in the community were really impacted and moved by that action, and folks came out of their homes into the streets and were cheering cheering Bob and Diane on and actually yelling at the police and asking them why they were there to protect Valero, but not over there to protect folks in the community. Um, that's, aw- that's awesome. I remember seeing, uh, seeing the news about, about that at the Valero uh, refinery over there. And actually, Manchester is pretty close to where I'm broadcasting from right now in Eastwood. We're right, uh, we're right in the, the Freethinker House is in the east side as well. So we're pretty, yeah, pretty close to this cause. We're actually in Manchester right now. Uh, we're about uh, maybe 100 feet away from the Valero refinery uh, at the home of our friend's house. We're doing a free store today. Um, and at the food store, we've got items available for folks in the community to take for free um, and information to hand out. Uh, we're kind of based on who was doing this project based on uh, the principles of mutual aid and solidarity. And right now, actually, we're with our friend Amber, and we're at her house, and she helped us set up the juice. She's six years old. And Amber, do you want to say hi on the radio? <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, we're also with a friend of ours named Judith who grew up in Manchester. Did you want to talk about whatever you want? Hello. Hello. Yeah. And anything you, you would like to add about um, how this is affecting your community is definitely welcome. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's been in a positive way just because it's. I think it's bringing people together a little bit more than it already they already were, and it's just raising awareness about you know these sorts of the things that are happening in the community in general, and hopefully it's just going to keep going through other communities that need to stand up for what's right, you know, for justice, and just it keeps going. Has has Trans Canada or Valero or any of the companies involved with the pipeline or the gas the uh, the the whole process of this involved offered any explanation to the families in that community? Uh, no, absolutely no. Actually, Eunice, you want to talk about uh, if Valero ever offers any information at all about what's going on? Actually, no. Valero has never really told anything going on in the air or what. Um, would be looking for costumes or help. The only thing that Valero has done is probably like um, help people understand the the guidelines on how to escape a blast or something, which is inevitable. Like people are going to die immediately if something was to happen like that or an explosion or something like that. So I don't think that even helps anything at all. So yeah, that's... basically, um, the tartan blockade is a concern not only about the people who live on the route of the pipeline, but the folks who live at the end of the pipeline here in Houston and in Port Arthur, where communities are being disproportionately affected. Um, what's happening is actually environmental racism, because the communities that are being most impacted are Latino and African American communities. Hey, hold, hold, hold that thought for just a second. We're going to go to a commercial yeah. break. Quick, and I want you guys to stay for just a couple more minutes if you guys can hold on. You're listening to Orion Talk Radio. Yeah, we'll be right back. Nice. Tuning in. We've been talking with the Tar Sands Blockade, Luna Walker. Thank you guys for joining the show. Go ahead and let everybody know anything else particular you want to you wanna leave us with before we let you go. Thanks, Rick. Uh, we just want to make sure that folks know that not only are we dedicated to uh, protecting the land along the pipeline route, but we're dedicated to 
uh, speaking out and standing in solidarity with folks that are at the point of extraction for the tar sands along the Athabasca River in Alberta, Canada, where Indigenous folks are being disproportionately impacted, and also uh, communities here in Houston and Port Arthur and the Gulf Coast, uh, where, again, low-income communities of color are being disproportionately affected. We're in Manchester right now on the east end of Houston. Uh, We are a couple hundred feet away from a massive Valero smokestack, and we are holding a free store based on the principles of mutual aid and solidarity we're distributing uh, food items and juices for people in the community as well as information about what it is that Valero is poisoning the air with. And I love to see examples of mutual aid and agorism, seeing the community offer alternatives that uh, the state or the corporations who are affecting the community and suppressing them offer nothing. So I commend you guys for that. And thank you so much for all the hard work you're doing. Like I said, I want to get more involved however I can, whether it's just getting the word out or making sure that we get this on video because people need to know that this is a struggle that's taking place, and if you're in Houston, this is happening in your backyard. Thank you guys for, for talking with me today. Let everybody know where they can find out more information about what's happening with you guys. Yeah, thanks for having us, Derek. The website is www.tarsandblockade.org, and we actually really need help and support right now if folks are interested in donating to our legal fund because Trans Canada is bullying us in the courtroom and... Uh, people, they are trying to intimidate people right now, are on a lawsuit. Uh, so any help that we can get to our legal fund, uh, this is real. Trans Canada is trying to destroy people's lives and destroying people's homes. And they have no care for people at any point in this pipeline, whether it be the start, the middle, or the finish here in Houston. Thank you for that. Yeah, and this is a very important message. As I said, I want to help you get it out however you can. Thank you guys for taking time to talk to us and stand strong out there in solidarity with the Tar Sands Blockade. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Derek. Thanks, Derek. You're welcome, you guys. Have a good day. Have a good day.